the topic was basically the development and application of transcriptome derived simple sequence repeat markers for genotyping banana weevils. Uh, now I will tell you that uh, there's been research on banana, uh, there has been research that has been conducted on banana weevil on population, on population structure, phylograph, genetic diversity using the different molecular markers. For example, random amplified polymorphic markers, amplified markers, then transcriptome and mitochondria, COC2 region uh, markers. However, uh, these markers are limited as they only observe genetic diversity within, but not among populations. And also they have drawbacks of they are not reproducible. All of them are actually codominant for mitochondria. They're only maternal, I mean, they're maternal pass on, so you will not be able to see over, uh, you will not be able to actually see over generations that are coming. So it was key for us to actually develop SSR markers. And SSR markers are basically tandem repeat motives of one to six base pairs. And these markers still, they are very codominant, meaning you can find it in the next progeny, highly polymorphic, meaning the differences are many and they are, they are abundant in the phone across the genome. And then uh, they are readily amplifiable. You can easily amplify it in the lab compared to AFLPs where you need restriction enzymes, you need adapters. This is quite very costly. This is quite very cheap in terms of actually running and as the, you only need the you only need the primer and that is it. Uh, uh, however, however, SSR markers have not been applied to study actually genetic diversity of vivos due to limited genomic and transcriptive sequences in of, of the banana genome. So the development of SSR markers has actually been conducted for different insect species using um, traditional methods such as genomic libraries and rapid screening. However, these are actually very expensive because in this, you are having a lot of enzymes, you are having a lot, of, you have to generate libraries, and then in rapid, you have to again clone. So this is quite very expensive. And, um, and it requires a lot of time validating them. So an alternative for method of developing SSR markers is basically um, use of genomic mitochondrial DNA sequences or transcriptomes for genomic sequences that are present in the databases. But in this case, we don't have that present in for the banana weevil. We don't have any of this present. So I obtained a transcriptome which was actually available at, at Kawanda Research. Uh, and what I mean by transcriptome is, is basically uh, transcriptome is actually basically means the total messenger RNA of an organism. So, and this actually tells you the function of the function of the function of genes that are available within the transcriptome. And this actually is very key as that you can actually use it. You can even apply it to actually amplify polymorphism in different related species of, I mean, coleoptera that are present within the cosmopolitan family. So I realized that we didn't have uh, SSR markers. Yes, sir. Actually, Sorry. genotype. It's reminding yes. time. time um, we may need to conclude, um, please. OK. Thank you. Um, so these were my objectives. I obtained samples from different 12 districts of Uganda representing agricultural zones, as you can see in the map. And from here, what happened was I obtained samples uh, in a range of four to five kilometers apart, so that uh, from farmers, approximately actually uh, 200 banana weevils were actually brought and stored in the lab. And then DNA extraction was done for them. And after DNA extraction was done, I had to get the transcriptome I assembled it after assembling it de uh, novel because I don't have any reference genome. So the novel assembly just basically means we're assembling something without a reference genome. And it is actually very, very key. Uh, so I developed this using transcriptome drive SSR markers using a software Chimanta. 
Tomato software basically uses a JavaScript and then it is integrated within R software. So I just, just picked primers that were um, flanking, that were flanking the SSR regions after of course doing what we call an in silico, an in silico, determining the in silico polymorphic markers. So I identified, I identified about 2,098 potential SSR markers. And out of these, there are only 904 markers that were unique markers that were different from the rest. And 88 of these out of their uniqueness, 88 were only polymorphic, which was 97.6% polymorphic SSR markers. The SSR markers that I identified were actually, they were dye, I, I didn't include mono, I mean, mono, 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 mononucleotides because usually that cannot be very informative when you are determining diversity. I only included dye up to actually, there were hexa and pentahexa nucleotides. And there were abandoned dye nucleotides. And this actually, actually agrees with several studies that has been done that the abundance of the nucleotide markers in eukaryotic genes are actually much compared to dye and tetranucleotide markers. And out of these dinucleotide markers, 80, 80 were actually more abundant. And this can be explained by actually what we call the retro, there was retro transcriptomics that happens within the genomes of actually, within the genomes of, 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 of eukaryotics. So uh, from here, I just picked, I couldn't assess all the 870, 887 markers. I only picked 27 and ran my samples on. And from this, I added 16 SSR primers were able to amplify on gradient PCR, but six were only polymorphic for all the populations that are grouped. Now, it is very important to know that uh, the genetic diversity that I observed was actually highest in central Uganda. It was highest in central Uganda, and this tell you that Uganda has been the biggest growing banana area. And then, big, that means banana weevil populations are built over time. And hence, it explains the high genetic diversity that is observed basically around um, within the central region. Uh, the eastern the Mbarara region, at the western, southwestern region, actually had the lowest. That tells you these farmers actually do manage their fields a lot there compared to actually farmers in central. And that is key. Now, I mean, among the banana weevil population still, as I told you, central, the highest genetic diversity compared to actually other regions of the, of the region, uh, of, of the country. Uh, then I did what we call a MOVA analysis for the 12 weevil population. And actually it showed that the genetic diversity among and within were actually very significant with within having, having, um, having the highest genetic diversity. And that can be explained by the selective pressures that are actually applied to these weevils. Uh, the low genetic diversity actually in the in the, in, the, in the eastern and southwestern region tells you a lot about, about the factors. So when I constructed the tendogram, the UPGM tendogram, populations from actually across regions clustered together with the exception of Wakiso. That tells you Wakiso population was either as a result of transportation of planting materials from another region. That's why you find it basically, basically uh, being incorporated uh, along the, Eastern region populations. And this was also observed actually by Tuesiche et al. 2019. He also found the same thing when he was using FLP markers. So basically, this is a tendogram for populations grouped across districts and across regions. So still. Yep, okay. Yeah, this is still the principal component analysis. It also grouped across regions. And my conclusion is there are only six highly polymorphic markers that I identified that were able to develop genetic diversity within and among banana. And 
the high genetic diversity within and among will be due to genetic bottlenecks, uh, founder effect due to banana population level segregation in breeding, natural and artificial barriers that regulate gene flow and level of transportation. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ali. That was, uh, that was a very good presentation on that side of uh, plant biotechnology. I apologize if I've taken a lot of time. 